This video explores the fascinating part of Nova Scotia that divides the Bay of Fundy. The Bay of Fundy is famous for 50-foot tides and pinkish-brown waters from the astonishing 100 billion tons of tide flow every six hours in each arm of the bay. Tides in the Minas Basin arm of the Bay of Fundy alone equal the water volume of all the world's rivers and are the highest tides in the world. What's the quickest way to see the Scottish Highlands and Africa? Take a trip to Nova Scotia. This eastern Canadian province is an assembly of continental fragments, most from below the equator, reflecting movements of the Earth's crust more than 200 million years ago and recent glacial forces. We will look at the portion of Nova Scotia outlined in blue, packed with geological history. A mile-thick ice cap left eastern Canada and Nova Scotia more than 9,000 years ago, but the Earth's crust is still rebounding. The center of the rebound, shown in red, is now in the Hudson Bay, far to the west, leaving Nova Scotia, shown in dark blue, to now sink at a rate of one foot every hundred years. Add three feet of expected sea level rise in the next 70 years, and many Nova Scotia shores will be underwater. We will explore several types of coast on the Bay of Fundy, including cobble beaches, cobble berms, sedimentary bluffs with tidal flats, vertical cliffs, often with terrestrial erosion above and marine erosion below, and sloping rock formations into the sea. The lighthouse at Cop Door is now automatic with no resident keepers. The lighthouse sits on the western end of a North Mountain basalt formation, extending across the east arm of the Bay of Fundy to the North Mountain basalt ridge forming the west coast of Nova Scotia from Cape Split all the way down to Briar Island. The Captor Cliffs are the small light green square, circled in red, just south of the fault that bisects Nova Scotia into two distinct parts, the northern Avalon terrain and southern Meguma terrain. The eastern part of the Avalon terrain, brown and blue, is much like Ireland and Scotland. The southern Meguma terrain, green and pink, comes from Africa and South America. These cliffs at Kapdor are more than 200 million year old igneous flood basalts that began during the late Triassic period as the supercontinent Pangaea began to break apart. The rifting began somewhere between where present-day eastern North America and northwestern Africa were joined. The Mid-Atlantic Ridge grew and continued to separate North America from Europe and Africa. We see the flood basalts here in these cliffs to our east under the Bay of Fundy and in the North Mountain Ridge along the west coast of Nova Scotia down to Briar Island. The geologic history of Nova Scotia is as complex as it is old. North of here, at Joggins Fossil Cliffs, are the oldest fossils known on Earth, providing a glimpse of early forms of life a hundred years before the dinosaurs. A number of rock falls from the cliffs are seen along the beach, not yet dispersed by strong currents and heavy waves of the bay. Rock and soil erosion take place at the top of the cliffs, and seawater erodes the base of the cliffs. For the cliffs to remain vertical, these forces must be in balance. The Mi'kmaq people mined copper here for 2,000 years. Samuel D. Champlain rediscovered the copper in the early 1600s on one of his 29 trips across the Atlantic. As we climb up over the cliffs and turn to the east, we can imagine the lens of North Mountain basalt extending under the Bay of Fundy and forming the west coast of Nova Scotia we see to the east, from Cape Split down to Briar Island. Here are several examples of cobble berms and cobble beaches in Advocate Bay. Large trees stacked on top of the cobble berm and spilling over onto its backside were brought here by very strong incoming currents in Advocate Bay and tides of 30 to 41 feet. This berm is unusually high and protects a large land and wetland area behind. Imagine the Minas Basin beyond Kapdor in the distance up to 25 miles wide and 50 miles in length, 
draining 50-foot tides in six hours and then refilling in another six hours. Each tide moves an incredible 100 billion tons of seawater every six hours. As we see in this illustration, current flows clockwise in Advocate Bay and counterclockwise in Greville Bay, meeting just offshore of Cap Door in a frightening tumult over a submerged basalt reef. The incoming tide flows through the Minas Channel, leading to the Minas Basin, where current flows reach an astonishing 16 feet per second and the world's highest tides reach 50 feet. The number and size of the trees covering the cobble berm brought here by the extreme current flows are impressive. A long gravel beach with gravel berm connects Partridge Island with Nova Scotia's Bay of Fundy Peninsula. The gravel beach changes to a sloping rock formation near the Partridge Island Point, where extreme current flow is almost always evident. The island is part of the Narrows from Minas Basin to the Bay of Fundy and has some of the fastest tidal flows in the world. A nearly one foot drop in sea level can be seen here where current sweeps around the point even near slack tide. The island has a long and interesting history going back to Samuel de Champlain who searched here for copper on the western cliffs of the island in 1607. The Mi'kmaq peoples called the island Wasok or heaven, as it was frequently shrouded in cloud. Apple River on the west branch of the Bay of Fundy has very old sedimentary cliffs, like much of this coast, north up to Joggin's Fossil Cliffs. The bay at Apple River has a reddish-brown bottom that is shallow for much of the bay. During the tide change every six hours, water in this bay is also reddish-brown. The bottom is hard sand with ribbons of rock formations and small gravel allowing walking far out into the bay during the short time between tides. A lighthouse marks the entrance to the bay. Joggin's Fossil Cliffs to the north, older but similar to these sedimentary cliffs here, have nine miles of fossil bearing cliffs from the Carboniferous Age, among the oldest fossils on earth and have attracted famous geologists since the 1840s. The cliffs at Joggins preserve a record of life from 341 to 289 million years ago. The oldest fossil reptile, a small lizard-sized animal, was found there in 1852 inside a 300 million year old fossilized tree trunk and is the oldest reference point for animals that lived on land 100 million years before the dinosaurs. The modern museum at Joggins Fossil Cliffs displays the history with fossils and photos. Photos taken at Joggins Fossil Cliffs show two 300 million year old trees and the Carboniferous Cliffs where most fossils are found. On the Bay of Fundy, we have the earliest fossils from 100 million years before the dinosaurs, cliff formations 200 million years old, and tidal flows of 100 billion tons in six hours. The Bay of Fundy and Nova Scotia give us both a deep geologic and biologic history.